What's up, everyone? It is February 1st, 2020 of the leap year. This is the 127th episode of Downtime Podcast. Jeremy, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Lisa. Uh, you know, we finally got a chance to record together, and I'm really happy about that. Oh, me too. Um, have you seen F9, the trailer yet? Oh, okay. You reminded me. I was just about to talk about you with that. I totally watched it like three times this morning, and I have a lot to say about that. So can we go into that really quick before you do anything else? Okay. <laughs> okay, so... um. You, I both, have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> we're we're both like I wouldn't say really big Fast and Furious fans, but we followed the franchise since its inception, basically, right? For me, it was a little late. I didn't follow it until F five. Okay, Fast okay. Five. But then I, after that, I watched everything. Yeah, no, I've watched everything. I've watched the short films. I've seen like you know, I haven't seen that. What is there's like an animated series coming out that I haven't seen that I'm not really interested in. It's yeah. not like Dom's nephew or something. I don't really care about it. This one of those movies where. It's really dumb. It's hella dumb. Yeah. But it's a. It's very well aware that it's stupid and ridiculous. Yep. That how could you not love it? Because they they know that nothing physically makes sense. It's so, a superhero movie. It's yeah. It, so that's what it is. Um, which is funny because the first three movies were actually about street racing and stealing cars. And yeah. Then, no. And then totally. the last four, or sorry, the last five are like international six, spy yeah. movies. Yeah. That's what they are. <laughs> Have you seen better luck tomorrow? The Justin Lin movie from like 2001 or whatever. No. Um, to check it out because the character Han is in that movie. Mm. And, um, it, okay. re- it reuses some of the same actors. Okay. Check it out. It's uh, it's Justin Lin's first movie, and he maxed out like five credit cards trying to make that movie. I see. It's pretty good, too. I would not be surprised if Gal Gadot comes for F10 at this point, because, Jeremy, okay. why <laughs> oh. is he alive? At the end of the trailer for F9, everyone should just go watch this trailer. I don't care if you've seen one movie, two movies, or three movies. Watch the trailer, regardless. There, um, is, there is a character named Han. Oh, I, he's he, my boy. And he appears in the last... 10 seconds of the trailer yep but the problem is that he died a long time ago and it wasn't like a it wasn't a death that oh there was a gray area with this death oh he actually died died like there was no way you could interpret that his car got turned over it exploded yeah it got turned over and it was retconned because jason statham turned his car over and jason's jason statham was a bad guy who is now seemingly a good guy which is so weird i know and here's what i think is gonna happen they're gonna show han from tokyo drift underneath his car like you know like struggling right and then we're gonna see Charlie's there on come and she's gonna drag him out from underneath it's the car so fucking and you're gonna dumb. see you're gonna no, no trust me this is what's gonna happen and then you're gonna see Jason Statham Jason Statham walk away because you know he, he did his job right this is so stupid but you know it's gonna happen right <laughs> you know that's what's gonna happen and that's sadly how it's gonna be god and oh that the whole trailer the whole the whole series as a whole and the trailer from F9 there's so many I have so many issues with it but it's so beautiful so I, I'm beautiful. I, I find all the issues beautiful. Everyone knows the f- the Fast and Furious franchise has gone off the rails. Yeah. Every any any fan of it knows. They, so. Yep. They and they will retcon something from the past if they have to make it for the future. Yes. I swear they will. <laughs> Remember that at the end of Tokyo Drift when you know like Sean's character is, sees Dominic Toretto and he's like I heard you're racing people all over, all over Asia and he's like I got nothing but time but in the context of Fury 7 he doesn't have time he hasn't been racing people <laughs> over Asia he was looking for Han because Han died and I'm just like this doesn't fit with the movie at all o- okay I guess we're no, going in this have, direction you just have to accept it exactly and that's that's how they rewrote it in Fast and Furious 7 so that he was looking for Han instead of racing people all over Asia although you know that kind of context would have seemed better in the future but when they were international spies or whatever but for the context of Fast and Furious 7 I was like this is so dumb but I love it so much <laughs> <laughs> I love the I love the cheesiness of it I watched um, Hobbs and Shaw and I was laughing my ass off it oh, was I, I- I loved Hobbs and Shaw. It was more of a comedy than an action it film. It was so fucking dumb. But it, was it was so great. <laughs> it was so stupid, but I love that movie because it's just. What are you doing in Samoa? Just saying. What are you doing in general? Yeah. <laughs> what is this movie? But it's, it's okay. Uh, I still loved it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like that's the movie that tore The Rock away from Vin Diesel and Tyrese away from The Rock. <laughs> I mean, 
Not like those three were going to be best friends to begin with. Too many egos. Familia, but they're familia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to drink Corona together. Yes. <laughs> I will say the one thing that bothers me about the trailer is John Cena. And not John Cena himself bothers me. Yeah. But the thing that bothers me is John Cena is Dominic and Mia Toretto's brother. That they never mentioned. That they never... Me- okay, there you go. Mm-hmm. The reason why this bothers me is because we've gone nine whole movie, eight whole ass movies without none of them mentioning that, oh, we have another brother that we never decided to talk about. They just added, they added John Cena in. I told you, if it exists, they're going to retcon they it. They retconned that whole thing. Letty died, guess what? Two movies later, hey, she's back. Han di- I, oh, I literally thought Han died. And now I see him again. I'm excited for him to come back because he's going to be racing in like a Toyota Supra that looks exactly like his car from, well, the same color, not exactly like, but yeah. the same colors from Tokyo Drift. Um, so I'm excited that he's back because that dude is awesome. Sung Kang, the actor is awesome. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, okay, seriously, how the hell are you going to fit him into this story? But on, But if you think about it too, for the Fast and Furious franchise, Death doesn't matter, and anime rules sometimes apply. Anime rules meaning, like, if you don't see the character die on screen, they're not dead. That they, they really followed that to a T. Oh, Fashion. yeah. Oh, they really did. Like, the Fast and Furious is both a superhero franchise and a somewhat anime franchise. It's like Initial D and the Marvel MCU had a baby. That's basically that's basically what this franchise is. I know, and I love it so much. You know what would have been a better twist or something oh yeah if john cena was brian's brother that would make more sense also because the toretto's are what they're like latino of some sort Who, uh, and then italian latino uh, lati- italian know. or whatever knows, yeah and then you have john cena and you're like how are they related yeah, they don't look they, they don't, don't look, look anything uh, alike uh, yeah. how much you want to bet at that at the end of the movie john cena is going to sit at the table and say grace with them Fuck. They're brothers. They're gonna turn on Cipher. This They're gonna turn on so Charlie's Theron. Fucking dumb. And then Charlie's Theron's gonna escape and go to the tenth movie because they said that the tenth one will end that arc. So I don't know what's gonna happen after the tenth movie, but they're for sure gonna do more movies. Like Vin Diesel's like, yeah, tens the last one. I'm like, not. That's not what your pocketbook says. Your pocketbook says that there's more money coming. Yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna make and more spin-offs. movies. Oh yeah. I mean, they already have that animated kids show with Dom's nephew. So I mean. Yeah, well, there's going to be more. If they're going to CGI, you know, Paul Walker again to get him back, they will. There's no shame. They're, they don't have... They got no chill. No chill. They're going to come back. So yes. They're going to make Paul Walker come back. Watch. Just... Oh, God. He's going to come back. I, I think so. They're going to force one of his real brothers yep. to act. The same brother who was his stand-in double. There were, there were two. There was, like, Caleb and Cody that were both his stand-ins, and I'm like, yeah. they're going to come back as, like, his... I don't know what they're going to do with him. Yeah. Uh, just leave the man alone. He's he's resting. <laughs> <laughs> he's, already, he's already dead, and you're still using him. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. But, yeah, I, no, I love that trailer. Yes. I want to watch it again. <laughs> I'm going to watch it again <laughs> later. Okay. Yes. Sounds good. <laughs> that was our talk about F9. We just started this podcast. <laughs> Everyone should go watch it. Everyone needs to watch it. It's great. Thanks for coming to episode 127. <laughs> it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot more to talk about. We're not just here to talk about Fast and Furious. We want to talk about video games. Yes. Are you still playing Dead by Daylight? Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new there. All right. Sounds good. Um, I mean, uh, I am, but uh, yeah, actually something new happened. I bought The Witcher 3. So you bought Steam. it? Yes. So I bought it. And Are I, you watching the show, by the way? I'm doing it simultaneously, but okay. I'm focusing more attention on the show. And then once the show is over, I can go play the game. But I, I'm like playing the game slowly but i get distracted by the show i'm trying to do both at the same time which is a terrible idea so i'm gonna i'm like in the first village of the witcher i forget what the village's name is but i know vesemir's there um i'm like going to find i'm going to an outpost to find yennefer yeah that's pretty that's literally where i am um but i know that once the yakuza games come out later this month i'm gonna be distracted again so i'm not gonna be able to finish the witcher I'm really excited. I'm trying to finish my game before 
the physical comes out. Oh, okay. Because originally I was going to get the digital, but then I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get the physical because why the fuck not? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I have all physical games of yeah. Yakuza, so. There's there's really no particular reason, just except because, oh well. <laughs> yeah, no, I... um. And I already have a copy of Yakuza 5, the original Japanese version, but hey, Perfect. more, more collection. I don't buy a physical games that much anymore, Same, so yeah. I only buy things I care about. As you vote with your wallet, you know, yes. that's what you do. Um, I was I was talking to someone last night about uh, the Yakuza franchise because he was like, yeah, I'm just getting right into it. And he was like, yeah, I'm on the part in Yakuza 0 where you go to... There was like the long haired guy with the eye patch. I'm like, you're in Club Grand with uh, Majima. He's like, yeah, that guy. And huh? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that you're you're in for a great treat. And I'm like, I spent 200 hours playing that game, and you're gonna love it. Oh yeah. And he's like, yeah, all the all the girls are porn stars. I was like, yeah. <laughs> how did you know that? <laughs> uh, and he's like, yeah. How do you know that? I'm like, don't. I'm asking the questions here, buddy. <laughs> don't you dare ask me a question. <laughs> You haven't played this franchise yet. And I was like, anyway, so I played zero, one, two, uh-huh, six. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, are all the girls porn stars in those games? I'm like, anyways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, I, I told him to start at zero. And he's like, yeah, I'm already starting at zero. So it's great. It's been great so far. Yeah. I really can't wait for three, four and five to come out. Like I'm seriously waiting for them to come out so I can spend all my time playing them. Because three, four and five are readily available to the west now there is absolutely no reason to start anywhere else except for zero because yeah, when yeah. it wasn't available you're kind of stuck in a lull of oh where should i start but now that you have everything of the original kiryu saga then start with zero yeah it's true although some people start with one and then they go back to zero but i don't know i think that you might as well start with zero because it gives more context to Nishikiyama. Yeah, I was gonna say like um, now that that's added to yeah. Yakuza Kiwami, it's, yeah. I think it's really integral to the storyline of their friendship. I think you would have a more emotional impact on Yakuza Kiwami if you played Zero first. Agreed. You know, and because I definitely did, I was like, oh my god, this game took a weird turn, and I don't know what's happening, but I have to accept it, and this is so cool. Oh yeah. If you really want to hear our in-depth thoughts, listen to our spoiler casts because we talk so much about these games. Yeah, I've seen. <laughs> Some of Yakuza, the original game with Devil Leon 7, the premier uh, YouTuber who does Yakuza games. And he did the original Yakuza and is just so different when yeah. you don't have that context of Nishiki and uh, Kiryu. So yep, yep. start with zero. It's yeah. the only way to go. Yeah, Elise and I will preach this until there's no more Yakuza games. Start with zero. Start with zero. <laughs> I heard that. Seven was okay received. You know, everyone's still kind of on the fence about the whole like turn based combat mechanic. I, for one, y'all are tripping. I am open to it. I'm still going to play it. Of turn based haters. But this is like in Japan. This is like in Japan, though, because in Japan, people are like, oh, we we want the, you know, the brawler brawler combat back. And I'm just like, okay, I I get it. Like, I get that there's too many RPGs and you don't want to make a franchise that's been known for brawling an RPG. But at the same time, you know, it's a soft reboot of the franchise. And maybe Yakuza 8 won't be like this. We don't know. But I definitely want to play 7 because I heard that uh, Ichiban is a lot funnier than uh, Kiryu as a protagonist because he's a lot, like, you know, goofier. So I want to see what he's like. I've also heard the storyline is much more mafia-driven because Mm -hmm. obviously the Yakuza is the underlying plot. But if you think about it, the real plot is about Kiryu taking care of Haruka. But I've mm-hmm. heard with Ichiban, especially because it's the first one, that this is much more into the gang stuff. Makes sense. Yeah. And the organization itself. And it al- it already exists with Yakuza 0 through 6, but just tenfold because now there's no side character like a Haruka to balance everything. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm pretty hyped for Yakuza 7. I don't think there is a expected date for that to come to the U.S. Except I'm assuming it's 21, though. No, people have been saying winter 2020. Winter 2020? Mm-hmm. Like, tra- when the translation will be done. Like, as in in the next month? No, as in winter 2020, like winter, de- November, December 
2020. Oh, I see. Not this. Okay, because yeah. was... it just came out in Japan. Yeah. So it wouldn't make any sense. They can't do the translation that fast. Okay, because I was like, yeah. we're in winter right now, Jeremy. Oh, uh, I know. Sorry. <laughs> I consider this winter 2019. <laughs> uh, winter 2020. Uh, November, December 2020. Uh, that's when the projected, speculated date is. And sure. I, I would believe it because they would, I, I they're... would assume they're trying to get it out as fast as they can after the Japanese released it and not wait three years. Yeah. Because it took two years for Zero to come out because it came out in Japan in 2015 and then 2017 is when it came out in the West. Long long overdue. And then I think the best way to judge it is looking at judgment, uh, ironically. (laughs) The best way to judge it is looking at judgment. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) It took about a year to translate that. Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah. They're getting quicker and quicker. Although they there was that mishap, so I can understand why maybe minus the mishap, yeah. I, they were basically done. It was all done. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, see if if that didn't happen, I think they I think the game would have maybe come out earlier. It would have come out in April if that yeah, didn't happen. Yeah. Probably. So yeah, I mean, I hope that uh, this one comes out faster. I would like it. To ha- I would like to have it in like September or something. Yeah. You know, but for sure, wishful thinking, wishful thinking. Um. Yeah. Are you still playing Judgment a replay? I'm doing a little bit of Judgment replay, and I don't think I announced this on the last podcast, but I officially have a switch. Yes. Did I say it? I don't know if I said it. I, don't, I think you y'all, told me I privately. Got a, I got a Switch, y'all. Yeah, there we go. I'm part of the handheld Nintendo family. The Switch gang. I, I'm Switch gang. Mm-hmm. Switch, Switch, <laughs> um, Nintendo gang. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, you don't know the reference? Nope. <laughs> Damn it. Jeremy, the Niners are playing in the Super Bowl tomorrow. Oh, uh, isn't it today? No? Tomorrow? today tomorrow uh tomorrow sunday uh okay i don't know i don't watch football uh, <laughs> i only know the niners are in the super bowl damn it okay i was hoping you. i only know niner gang gang or whatever bang bang niner gang there we go <laughs> bang bang niner gang it's an e40 song there we go and he's the bay area he is the bay area he is the bay area there yeah, what, what else represents the bay area aside from tom hanks <laughs> and <laughs> he, mahershal and uh who else T- um zendaya zendaya ryan coogler ryan coogler mm-hmm but still, Robin e- Williams. <laughs> Robin Williams, but still E40. George Lucas, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but still E40. E40. E- he, E40 has his own top ramen. Do you see that? He's like, he oh, has his own food, like four or five different drinking food yeah. franchise. Or not franchises, but uh, his, his brands. Brands. So the the top ramen he's part of is like called hip hop ramen or something and oh, it's like him and then a, bu- t- a bunch of other rappers are just like on it. So my dream is to get E40, which is like the 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 tequila he has it's mm-hmm. actually pretty good i had it it was pretty smooth i've had a lot of his wine before but i've never had his tequila yet. oh the earl stevens the earl co- stevens selects. Collect- yep <laughs> i want to drink those with the top ramen <laughs> the mango scotto is pretty amazing i've heard yeah it's it tastes really good hmm. and also shout out to e40 for adding mango to that shit oh, yeah the- <laughs> he also co-owns olympia yes place i, I was know. so surprised he by that. is on the food game he, lo- he, I, he loves the bay and he loves the food hey why why not why and he not? loves the people in the bay so yes this man is great exactly <laughs> exactly uh, he's our he's our e40 he's our earl he's our earl <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah i gotta switch <laughs> yeah you gotta switch I got, that's so dope i gotta switch it's turquoise mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i only have one game on it it's octopath traveler yeah, you gotta uh, rightfully it, it's within the name, you know, tra- Octopath Traveler, and you use it to travel. Yeah, you play with it when you travel. So I, I play it. It's my commute handheld because I'm on the commute for at least two hours a day. Oh yeah, and yeah, it's one of the best time sinks. Nice. Um, to th- like, I just put on a podcast and I play my Switch, and I'm surprised that I've survived my. C- commute so long without a switch <laughs> but i'm glad that i invested in this and i can play more rpgs nice and not feel like oh my god there's not enough time to play games because now i have all the time it's true and you can utilize it by playing video games on yeah. the go exactly that's awesome so i have my switch light it's turquoise it's beautiful it's a really pretty color <laughs> yeah it's, it's a great <laughs> it's yeah. so pretty it can't connect to a tv but that's fine because i don't intend to use it for that purpose any i never intended to get a switch for that purpose anyways. sure yeah 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 my sole purpose is always just to play by myself yeah no that's fine yeah so sure 
And then, yeah, I have Octopath Traveler. As you can probably tell by the name, Octopath Traveler is about oct and eight. Octopus? No, Octopus, just kidding. <laughs> Ocho, eight people who are on a path traveling to make their dreams come true it's a square enix game right it is a square enix game yeah, and there's a high demand for a sequel it's really good so far definitely one of my favorite jrpgs i've played in a while it's very it's one of the grindiest games i've ever played though i've never felt like i've had to grind and level up so much except playing this game so okay you start off Octopath Traveler, and there you have the eight characters in front of you, and you can choose one of those eight characters. So I chose this character, Cyrus, and he starts off as level one. And when you go to different cities and you're starting to pick up the people, it tells you, oh, what level you should be to, uh, to get to that city and to defeat the boss. So for, exa- sure. so for example... Oh, if you want to defeat the boss successfully, you got to at least be level seven with your whole party. So mm-hmm. as you're picking up people, it's not it's not matching up with what your current level is with your first character chosen. Every time you pick up a character, you have to start back at level one. So right now, I'm 20 hours into the game. My mm-hmm. main character, Cyrus, has 30 level 30 but the lowest level who is this girl tressa has level 12 what i know and what makes this even more grindy is that each character has four chapters to their story Mm -hmm. so just to give you an idea of what the chapters are so for so there's four bosses eventually that each character has to defeat for themselves level the very first chapter one it's suggested that you at least be a level seven. And then by chapter two, at least be a level like 25. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm at, I'm on the transition of level of chapter two to chapter three. And it's telling me I got to be at level 40, but I got to be at level 40 eventually with everyone. So I have to grind at some point with everybody. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then who knows what, chapter four the final chapter is going to be it's probably going to be level 60 so mm-hmm. it's a, it's a lot of grinding but that's what my commute's for so <laughs> so it does yeah. make the game a lot easier to play because i can just mindlessly fight people on the train yeah. and then when i get home then i'll actually play the storyline and nice. it helps out and i i really like it so far oh another thing about octopath traveler is that because you're picking up all the eight people along the way, each person has its own different special abilities and special skills. But what kind of sucks is that I got the perfect four people in my party as my first four people. So, oh, I see. So, and I didn't do that on purpose. I didn't look up a guide on which characters I should go to first. I, in fact, when I chose Cyrus, I didn't even think anything of it except I chose him randomly. Like, I, but it turns out that Cyrus is the one and only black mage of the game. And then the next person I picked up, her name's Ophelia, mm-hmm. the only white mage. <laughs> of the game oh wow and then the next two i picked up are two really good physical characters Hmm. um therion and hannet and then one of and then they both utilize different weapons and different skills so with hannet you can have uh you can capture creatures to help to help with you in battle and then with therion he can steal things so he can steal items he can steal hp he can mm-hmm. steal SP. So I got the perfect party as my first four people that the next four people that I'm picking up, I'm not feeling them because mm. there is just I have but I have to play with all of them. Yeah. And then what sucks too is the last four, aside from um one of the girls from I forgot her name, but one of the girls who's a dancer, um, 
she's a gypsy. Okay. She's the only interesting uh, character and story of the last four that I'm picking up. But everyone else is kind of like a basic ass story. So <laughs> it's like the first four characters I picked up ha- have the best story too. Mm. Like Therion, who's the gu- who's the thief, um, has to steal four dragon stones for a rich family. Um, but the but the process to steal all of that's really interesting. And then the character that I chose, Cyrus. So it it's pretty cool. So the the task is he's a scholar and you're supposed to find a missing tome, like a missing scroll from his scholar library. Okay. And that's all the information you're given. But then in chapter two, you find out that this tome is used for black magic and for killing people. Oh, wow. So, and, then you're, and, and then that's when it really picks up. So basically, my first four are the best. <laughs> and, yeah. And that's what makes this really grindy because if this was Final Fantasy or persona or any other game i wouldn't necessarily like the party that i like is the party i would stick with the whole time oh i see but yeah. now ne- but now i gotta play with everyone yeah you're stuck with them and i'm stuck with them yeah so i'm sure everyone's stories are gonna get interesting throughout the process but that's one thing for sure about octopath is that you have when you play this you have to accept that you are going to play with every single character that you have Mm. whether you like it or not that makes sense yeah it's fine though um they're they're all interesting enough to to play with and um also so there's eight people and uh this is going to be a little hard to describe if you haven't played before but there's eight people and two are kind of paired so they're sort of like a splitting image of each other in terms of skills Mm -hmm. and experience so the best example that I can give is that uh, Therion, his special skill is that he's a thief, so he can steal items from people. And then you have another character, Tressa, and Tressa is a person who can bargain and buy cheap items from people. So hmm. it's like as, there's a splitting image of... there's So like two people represent sort of like one sort of skill... And how they do it is a little different. Interesting. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So, so it's like those. This pair of characters can take items from people. One of them steals it. One of them buys it off of people. And then another example is another pair of characters can um, can um, get information from people. One of them can simply ask without having any repercussions Mm -hmm. and another one um does it in a more scrutinizing sort of way where they get information but because they're much more aggressive about it it can piss people off so i see yeah so it's like of the eight people you can assemble your party so that you can have one of each skill okay of eat yeah i see yeah so it's it is diverse in that way, and I do like that idea. But and also conveniently, in the first four people that I chose, all four of them were at least one of the roles. So yeah, oh. it, basically my 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 first party is super OP. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> but, like wow. Yeah, it, it, and I didn't even do it on purpose. It, it's just the way that the tides came by. You're just like, oh, I'll pick you, you, you. Yeah, oh, ex- wow, you're all strong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just went on a path and it all worked out in my favor. An octopath, if you An may. An octopath, if you may. <laughs> I know. Awesome. Yeah, so I would say that I'm about a third into the game now. I'm about to reach halfway and nice. Uh, very soon because I'm almost done with everyone's chapter two great and i'm very excited this is a this is a good jrpg man i can't wait to play fire emblem though because i heard it's easy as fuck because (laughs) (laughs) i heard that fire emblem's so easy that that sometimes when i'm grinding i'm just i'm just like oh god like i just (laughs) like this is taking so long (laughs) well when you finish it you can pop in three houses and then i know know, talk about it because i heard that game is also really really good exactly so Hey, I'm starting off the new year with probably might be my longest game of the year. But Nothing wrong with nothing that. Nothing wrong with that. 
Um, I really like it so far. I definitely suggest Octopath. I'm glad that I got it on the Switch. And I was initially going to get it on Steam when I found out it was going to be available on yeah. Steam. But then when I decided to get a Switch, I I knew that a lot of JRPGs and RPGs in general are just much more better in a handheld. Yeah. So. Yeah, to go. <laughs> yeah, to go. Mm. So those are my thoughts on Octopath. Dope. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thank you for describing it because I've heard nothing but good things about that game and it sounds awesome so far. So maybe I'll pick it up. But uh, it is going to be a long game. It's a long ass game. I don't know if I have time though. It's a yeah, for real. It's a I think it's a 60 70 hour commitment at least. <sighs> See, I I'm going to use those hours for Yakuza. Yeah. I I I my love is to Yakuza. Exactly. So, <laughs> it's going to it's going to take a while. And you do realize Yakuza 5 is the longest one out of all of them, right? Can't wait. Yeah, it's the longest one and and like one of the best ones too. I'm I'm assuming Yakuza 3 and 4 are going to be about 130 to 150 hours for me personally, and I'm assuming for 5 in my personal time is going to be about 200 to 300 hours. Yeah. Cuz I know what I I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get distracted. That's what's going to happen to me. And all the Ugh. yeah, and all the five characters of Yakuza Five have a side gig or have a side um, have a side quest you can do, and you can be a taxi cab driver Kiryu. I want to I want to do that so badly. Yeah, it's gonna be great. <laughs> I'm so excited for that game. Yes. But before th- oh well after that I n- I need to I want to play those games as soon as possible because I know Animal Crossing is gonna take up my time too. I I. Th- I don't know if I'm going to get Animal Crossing on launch, but a lot of people are telling me to, and I love just regular ass sim games. I'm telling you to. I know. Yeah. You, there you go. You have a Switch. You must own it. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> All right then. But I, you know me. I love my like mundane tasks yeah. of just doing, you know. <laughs> I'm going to get sucked in. I'm going to be yeah. on this TV right here just playing the game. And I want to be building a house, tending a garden. Exactly. Doing whatever. That's everything I love, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's such a chill game, you know? That's why I love Animal Crossing. And you can pick it up whenever, too. Or, like, when you have it, you can play it whenever, too. Oh, no, that's the beauty of it. I'll bring yeah. it to work, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really ex- I'm looking forward to it. March is when it's coming out. Yes. Um, it's the only game really coming out in March now because <sighs> everything got delayed. Uh, probably for the better but yeah you know. i'm i was really looking forward to cyberpunk but now that it's coming out in september i can be like all right i have until then to play yakuza and animal easier. crossing absolutely yeah um yeah so speaking of yakuza by the way did i tell you that i'm going to japan in march no but not surprised okay <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> if you have been listening for a long time, you know that I go to Japan at least once a year. This year, I'm actually going twice. Um, once after the Olympics and once uh, in March. I'll be going with my family in March. You did tell me this. Yeah. No, and you, my, to- you, you told me about the time you're going. Yeah. March. And my brother. Uh, yeah. So, we have a whole trip planned from the Kansai area to Tokyo. It's going to be dope. Yeah. Um. And then in, uh, after when I go after the Olympics, it's just going to be me about myself and just to, just to meet up with friends because I tried to reach out to a few friends for this upcoming trip, but I don't want to pack my parents' schedule too much too because I know that they're gonna they're gonna heavily rely on me to take them around. Oh and, yeah. And I don't want to be like you know, like being like oh, I'm, I gotta go do something else, you know. But like totally. Yeah. So that's why I kind of want to go again to like, you know see more things hang out with more people what month are you going after i don't know yet the maybe september or october for sure it's kind of tentative right now got it i was about to say um for anyone trying to go to japan this year i honestly wouldn't suggest going during the olympics unless you are trying to see the olympics i i wouldn't yeah. just i wouldn't outright go during the tokyo olympics if you're not going to see a game because there's no point i yeah my reasons for not going during the Olympics are one, because I just don't want to deal with the crowds because I know things are going to be like 10 times more crowded Two, It's going to be trashed everywhere. There's going to be like, I know there's going to be some like anti American or like anti foreigner sentiment because of the, of the garbage that people are going to be lying around. There's going to be a lot of rude people. Um, uh, they're just going to like tarnish the image of, uh, the city. I, that's what I feel like. Yeah. Um, and, uh, tickets are crazy expensive. Uh, my friend said that her friend is going and she paid like two to three thousand dollars for a ticket to watch a game 
No, to go to Japan. The flight itself? Yeah. And I was like, Man, what the sucks. heck? And she's like, yeah. And she paid $5,000 to watch badminton or something. That's And I was like, your friend must be rich. And she's like, no, she's not. I'm like, okay, well, uh, n- no. First yeah. of all, I'm not doing any of that. Um, so I kind of don't want to go in September because I feel like the city will be trashed after the Olympics. Um, but I kind of want to go in October because, like, you know, you got a month to recover. Everything yeah. should be groovy. Hey. Things might be cheaper. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, going in March, um, I just want to, you know, go around, do the usual stuff. Um, I did see that article about the dude who went to Japan to find the Yakuza and, and Kabukicho, and I thought that was really stupid. <laughs> that article that's, uh, like Kotaku article. Oh yeah. I saw that. Yeah. So dumb. <laughs> it's just so dumb. It's like, you, you'll only find the Yakuza if you're causing trouble, you know? So what I have to say is I totally encourage if you want to see the locations of Yakuza just to actually see them live, mm-hmm. such as going to Shinjuku or going to Okinawa or going to any of the major hubs that a city is based off yeah. of, like like Hiroshima too. Sure. I like If that inspires you to go to Japan, totally do it because those places are going to be super awesome, beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a lot of... Japan in general is a lot of fun. But to actively seek... You know, an organized crime an, game. An organized crime game. Don't, yeah. That is weird. Don't don't, don't go that way. <laughs> because as much as we talk about the games, Yakuza, we don't glorify them as a people. I don't glorify you know any of the actions that they partake because they're fictional video games. I think it's cool and it's definitely over the top, especially with a lot of the characters, a lot of the actions they take, a lot of like the fighting moves. A lot, you yeah. know, everything they do is like like. A version of the Yakuza that both exists but also is fantasy in a certain sense. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, but the guy that was... Like, Kiryu should have been dead by now. It's all fantasy. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. And, you know, like, it's a video game. Again, yeah. it's, a, it's a piece of fiction. But, yeah, going back to it, don't actively seek out an organized crime gang. I don't I don't recommend of an, it. Of any kind. Yeah, of because kind. <laughs> you're not going to exist anymore. They're going to take yeah. you away. They're going to beat your ass. And then they're going to be like, all right... Well, tell everyone what you did. Did you have a good time? You know? Oh, my gosh. And also, although they do exist in Kabukicho, not... I wouldn't say their presence is heavily there anymore. If you want to find the Yakuza, you got to go to Ikebukuro. That's where they are. Not in Kabukicho. Ikebukuro is where all the organized crime people are. Because, like, why would they go to Kabukicho? Everyone knows that the Yakuza are in Kabukicho. So, if everyone thinks that they're still there, they're going to be somewhere else. Jeremy, are you promoting the... No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't about. know what you're I'm talking about. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to tell you where. I'm, I don't know anyone there. I'm just, you know, just, I'm just saying. All right. I, listen, when I, my first time in Japan, I stayed at a hotel that I regret staying at because it was really sketchy. And I was like, oh, this is, might be one of those hotels. And it was. And I was like, all right, let's not stay here anymore. When you're young and you're broke, sometimes you just got to stay at that cheap hostel or that cheap love hotel though so. Exa- no and i didn't know that this neighborhood was basically the equivalent of like the tenderloin but in japan but you know you the, the image of that is much different like it's they're kind of two extremes the tenderloin in japan is not as like gun scary or stabby as the tenderloin in in and sf you know there's not a lot of homeless people there's none and at when all we say stabby we're not talking about knives we're talking about needles exactly yeah, both why not why, why? Porque no los dos, porque you know no los dos. um and you know but like it was the the street i stayed on in ikebu girl was like kind of dirty there were like some sketchy looking people around i'm yeah. like oh no this is okay and i knew from and then i looked it up later and i was like i'm in a bad neighborhood why did i stay here okay. oh because it was cheap why is it cheap because it looks bad yep um but lesson learned you guys, Don't. you do this dumb shit when you're young, though. When like when you when you're yeah. older and you have more money, then you know what to do. Exactly. I was a I was a sophomore in college. Exactly. So I was exactly. like, you know what, dude? I got money. To, let's go to Japan. Go yep. to Japan. Oh, I messed up. Yes. But it's all good. I still survived. I have you know fun to, fun stories to tell. Um, it didn't tarnish my experience, but I just recommend you don't stay in Ikebukuro. Um, that being said. 
the Airbnb that my family and I are staying at in March is in Kabukicho <laughs> hey. because it was cheap. And I was just like, my parents were so worried about the Yakuza. And I was like, they're not there. Don't worry about it. I if know. You, the only trouble you'll find is the one that you really, really look for. Like, if, yes, trouble will find you if you look for it. Exactly. But, but don't look for it. Then you're fine. Exactly. You know, so it's all good. Just don't. We're just going to be chill. You know, just going to have a good time. That's all. Yes. Visit the places, but don't try to find them. <laughs> look, but don't touch. Yeah. Look, but don't touch. That's all I got to say. But yeah. So I'll be going to Japan this year twice. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. Maybe I kind of want to go in September for the Tokyo Game Show. That's mm. the only reason why I would go. For sure. Um, But we'll see. Maybe September. Awesome. Yeah. But I, I, I it's, my, it's been my dream to go to the Tokyo Game Show. Yeah. So I hope that. I hope I can go. It's like 10 bucks for yeah. access. So It's really cheap. Surprisingly. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Speaking of game shows and gaming conventions, um, going now segueing into news for this week. Nice. So um, we're going to talk about E3 2020 again because hey. from uh, this is from Polygon, but the ESA, who are the people who make E3, they came out with a statement. We are well down the path on the development and production of a large, super fun floor experience that celebrates gaming culture in exciting new ways. We will be showcasing E3 to the world with new streaming and digital programming while creating gatherings on the show floor that let people do what they love the most, play and celebrate games. And we will re and we rebuilt the E3 website with enhanced and layered security measures developed by an enhanced um, outside cybersecurity firm. So I that last sentence I think is in reference to the fact that every single person who attended E3 last year got their information leaked at some point. Mm-hmm. Um. So um. But so E3 as we know it really has been on a weird path because ever since they let. Ever since they started letting fans in, mm-hmm. more companies have been dropping out of yeah. E3. Yeah, yeah. And now, looks like they're on the road to just making this a full fledged like, what is it? PAX. They're gonna. This is just a fan event. Yeah, and you know, there's pros and cons to that. Uh, I, I actually, I, I, I'm okay with, you know, the companies having their own, conv- their own like announcement uh formats and yeah like and experiences and conventions yeah you know like sony doing their own thing I, I really don't mind because i feel like you shouldn't be held down by social conventions for what a company what like the people that run e3 dictate for you exactly you should do whatever you want to because you can you have the money to not be there so then just do it yep you know and i, I think that it creates you know competition and variety and i think it's healthy for the gaming industry for an industry that is like you know always changing always being doing something different always trying to be different i think it's cool that these companies are realizing that and recognizing it for an age of technology i think what i'll miss about e3 was this was the only week where all of the companies of the united states were just under one roof Mm -hmm. and celebrating games and just announcing some random things yeah um that that's the one thing that I think I'll miss just because the synergy of all these gaming announcements coming together was exciting. Yeah. And just the fact that it, everyone can see it. If you were in the industry, I really do think they screwed it up a lot when they started accepting more people to attend without having a business incentive. Yeah. Like that was, that was the, their biggest screw up for sure. That turned a lot of people off, but absolutely. Yeah. But, um, I do wish I do wish that there would be at least like one event where just everyone's under one roof and having a good time. And because yep. I don't think it's going to be E3 anymore, but no. it would be cool if there was a weekend of just everyone coming together for the sake of unifying games and platforms and streaming. I feel like sites. that would be more packs. Now it's going to be packs where they, you know, celebrate games together. Yeah. Um, yeah, E3. PAX has always been celebratory. PAX has never really been about announcements, except for some minor things. But mostly indie games having announcements. Yeah. Oh, there. absolutely. Yeah, I f- I feel like PAX is a little bit more, is a little bit more. How do I say this? 
isn't bogged down by the leadership that runs it. Yes. Because I don't know, you probably seen those those uh, plans where the leadership of E3 was like, what if we get the NBA stars to play basketball and promote the game during our conference? I'm like, what the hell is that going to do? <laughs> there was a time where they did some really crazy things for advertising, though. Yeah. And like there was a time where Cisco was at E3, mm-hmm. but it was like, fuck it. Why? Why not? <laughs> Yeah, they're like, hey, we're entertainment, right? And yeah. everyone's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turned out that Cisco was a gamer and mm-hmm. had a lot of things to say. Why not? Why not? I think I'm always down for random things, but as long as there's some context to it. Yeah, totally. And then next on the news, uh, Xbox Game Pass for February 2020. February 1st is going to have... Isle of the Man and Fable Heroes and then February 16th is going to have Call of Cthulhu and Star Wars Battlefront to download. Mm-hmm. No wonder. Sorry, this is... Okay, now that, okay. I, now that I read this, this makes sense. I have a co-worker who was surprised that Star Wars Battlefront was not on Xbox and I was like on Xbox... or I, I'm sorry, I don't play Xbox so I don't really know a lot of the library but I was like, how is it not on their library? Because... I thought Battlefront was everywhere at this point, but then now this makes sense that <laughs> that it wasn't everywhere. What Battlefront? Uh, Battlefront One from two thousand five, um, or from two thousand fifteen. You know, that's actually a really good question. I don't know which one it is because <laughs> the names are so confusing, and yeah. it doesn't help that they decided to name them that way. That's a good point. I'm not sure <sighs> which one it's going to be for right. February sixteenth. Okay, but one of the Battlefronts will be there. One of them. One of them. So. Atari is coming out with a video game hotel chain called Atari Hotels. Saw that. So random. Because I guess why not? They're like, hey, we're a brand name that everyone knows. The very first game and console. Sold to the mass market. Yeah. Sold to the mass market is now a hotel chain. And the first one's going to be in Phoenix, Arizona of all places. Oh, gamers in Phoenix. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. I know. (laughs) And there are probably, not probably, there are gamers all over. But that's probably because there's so much land. Is Phoenix? <laughs> that's where the, the only reason that is, I could think of. Is Phoenix where Atari buried all those ET games? <laughs> where's that? Where's that in the desert? Remember? Oh shoot! Is that where it is? Because that'd be really hilarious. I I don't know. Let me. I want to look that up right now. While you look that up, I will read the statement from Atari Hotels. They already have the trademark Atari Hotels. By oh the way. wow. Atari Hotels level up hotel entertainment with fully immersive experiences for every age and gaming ability, including the latest in VR and AR. Select hotels will also feature state-of-the-art venues and studios to accommodate esports events. Mm. So, VR Pong, Jeremy. VR Pong is what everyone wants. It's what it's what the people want. It's they've spoken. Um, the burial is in New Mexico. There's going to be one in New Mexico, I bet. That'd be hilarious if it was next to that. <laughs> Santa Fe, bur- New Mexico. <laughs> so the the Atari video game burial is in uh, Al- Alamo-, Alamo Gordo, New Mexico. Hmm. It's uh, they f- That'd be hilarious if they had a hotel there, if Atari had a hotel there, <laughs> like next to the burial site. It's like, this is a piece of history. And then people are like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, my God. God. You know, it was always a dream. It was always like a, a, a myth that there's a bunch of at- Atari ET games in the desert. <laughs> Turned out it was real, and that'd be funny if there was a hotel next to it. That's all I'm saying. It could be a good marketing uh, well, strategy. It's going to be ho- Atari Hotels. Oh, yeah. With an S. So uh, absolutely. Don't, don't count that out. It's going to be in New Mexico. It's going to be in New Mexico. That's what I want. Put that energy <laughs> in the universe, yeah, New it's, Mexico. It's really good marketing to have it next to the ET burial site because it, it would bring people to the site and to the hotel. You know? That'd be so cool. Yeah. You can have part of the hotel be a museum for all the buried ET games or whatever. That would actually be pretty interesting. Yeah, see? It's that, g- oh, that would, man. That, that, it would, that would be a good marketing. Hire me, Atari. <laughs> <laughs> Hire Jeremy. I'm a contractor. I'll, I'll do your work. Hire Jeremy. <laughs> But yeah, that's a that's a thing that's happening. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean like new consoles, new hotels. I won't stay at the hotel depending on where it is and if how and how much it costs. So the fact that 
that there's Atari hotels means that this is something that the people want and gets the people going. Oh. Did you want this, Jeremy? Because no. I didn't want this. I, I did not want this. I don't know what <laughs> they thought that would make this a good idea. They're like, hey, you know what would be a great idea? If we made hotels. Because everyone knows our branding and everyone's like, what? I know. The only... Yeah, I don't get it. If Nintendo or Sega or Sony or Microsoft made a hotel based on their game IP addresses, uh, uh, sorry, not game IP addresses, game IPs, I would just be like, no, like, why would I never asked for this? I still, even if the, it existed, I'd be like, no, I, I don't want to go. Yeah, there's already arcades for everything, so you don't yeah. really need to stay at a hotel. Exactly. I If I was a kid, I'd be like, hell yeah, I want to stay at that hotel. As an adult, I'm like, I could save my money and buy video games with it. It would be different, too, if there was a theme park associated with it for I example mean, when you stay at if you stay at a disneyland hotel it is right next to disneyland or disney world yeah whereas this is just a hotel i mean i'm positive that when nintendo land is is finally done at universal studios osaka i think there's going to be an associated hotel because how could they not capitalize on that and okay. i feel like that's more appropriate to your point about the disney hotels it would make more sense if they had a nintendo hotel next to the nintendo theme park or section of the theme park. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Yeah. Coming out sometime in the near future. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and then the last piece of news I have for today. Jeremy, remember Google Stadia? Of course. I'm, I've been following the news. Have you really been following the Absolutely. news? Absolutely. You know, okay. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. I completely forgot about Stadia for a while. Sure. A lot of people did. I forgot... I didn't even know it came out out in November. Oh, I didn't even know it was out already until I read this news. Did you know that you had to buy the controller separately? I didn't know that. Isn't that See, sad? Th well, this is how much <laughs> I was resigned from Google Stadia. I didn't even know that. It's all of, good. I mean, this was happening. I think it was better that you didn't pay attention to it because well, this is how much I cared about it. This is exactly. how much I care about video games streaming. I was just curious about the industry, uh, how they, how you know, how the industry would take it, where the direction it was going in, um, uh, the users that bought it, and just their reception to it overall. And everyone hates it. So when I first, when we first talked about it, I didn't realize it was actually coming out in 2019 i thought oh i thought it was one of those things where they announced it but oh it's gonna come out in a year or two i thought you knew that it was coming out uh, I, I was like oh, i can't wait to see the reviews you see this is just how much i this is how much mm. i forgot about it it's fine i mean everyone thought it was gonna be a game changer everyone thought it was gonna shake up the industry the only thing it did was uh shoot itself on the foot because they're like there's gonna be a hundred games coming out this year and everyone's like great and they're like um it's been few 40 weeks. days it's been 40 days 40 and days. nothing's come out and they're like what is going on and there's all this commotion on their reddit yep. there's an entire reddit thread yep. about where are the games to the point that some a rep from google stadia had to come in and say that they're working on it yeah but that doesn't help it no of course it doesn't help you're just you putting see, a band-aid on the bleeding wound you see when in the yakuza subreddit when people have questions and the Yakuza reps answer like Sega and RGGS, they have an answer and they're credible because everything they say happens. True. Whereas, yeah. whereas with Google Stadia, uh, I, catching up on all of this, I didn't even realize there was this much drama, apparently. <laughs> also, come on, you bought the Google Stadia and you knew that streaming games is not a perfect thing yet. Why would you do this? Yeah, I mean... And I'm, mm. I'm disappointed. I mean, if anyone was going to do it, it, it would have been either Google or Microsoft. And it's and it seems like Microsoft's, like, what is it, Xbox Game Pass is doing the exact same Stadia does, but for free and um, yeah. better because apparently they have a better connection system and... It just it just works compared to Stadia, which like has a lag and all that other stuff. And just the very simple thing is that Microsoft has already been working on games since early 2000, mm -hmm. and Google all of a sudden said, "Oh, we're gonna work on games," and I'm like, "Uh, okay, bye." Yeah, they're just throwing money at the wall and seeing what sticks. Exactly. And I'm just like, that's not that's not how it works. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of money lost with this. Mm. I can I already feel it. Yeah. Um. How much time do you give until they squash Stadia? Oh, another year maybe. They're probably going to ride out this year, see how well it does, and be like, all right, well, we're done. Like Google Glass, this is going to go away. And people are going to be like, wait, we just spent so much money on this. I'm sure some people were trying to invest their whole gaming like 
architecture and economy into the stadia or they at least had high hopes for it but now that it's not doing well i'm sure people are seeing the writing on the wall and they're just gonna dump it so there's nothing you, you basically made a terrible choice that you know it was a hit or miss with stadia right it was either going to do really well or do really poorly and you took the chance when you bought it so you know it's on you i give it six months oh dang <laughs> this is my prop bet Okay. okay. Hey, I, 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 okay. This is my, this is my Super Bowl prop bet. There you I go. have two Super Bowl prop bets, which by the time this episode comes out on Monday, you know, we'll know if this is true or not. Yeah. Yeah. We'll so see. my first prop bet is that Stadia six months mm-hmm. till it gets squashed. My second prop bet is that Pitbull is going to be a surprise guest performer at the Super Bowl oh, they halftime don't, show. They don't know who's going to be at the halftime show yet you know who's gonna be at the halftime show which is j-lo and shakira Uh, but they don't reveal who the surprise guest is uh, until the super bowl itself i see i see so for example what was it i think it was cold it was cold play like first of all who asked cold play to perform at a halftime show that's supposed to be about hype and then cold all of cold play songs are slow wasn't this last year when they were supposed to do the spongebob one and everyone was disappointed i think no, that was Maroon 5. Oh, but yes, never mind. <laughs> first of all, you got to get a hype person to perform at the halftime show. Because why the fuck would you ever call Coldplay for that? And then, uh-huh. but the thing is, the hype was that their surprise guests were Beyonce and Bruno Mars. So, oh, yeah. So that was, so it, it's like that. So there's a rumor. So there's rumors that it's like they're going to get someone from Florida, which would mean it's either Pitbull or Flo Rida. Uh, but I I think it's Pitbull because Pitbull has more songs with J-Lo. And he's Mr. Worldwide. And he's Mr. Worldwide. This is a mi- <laughs> this is going to be an absolutely missed opportunity if they do not capitalize mm. on Mr. 4. Is it 405? Yeah, I think Mr. it's 405. 305, 305. Mr. 305. I have no idea. No, it's 305. <laughs> I know this. I... I it's 305. <laughs> that's, okay. all I got, that's all I got to hey, say. Hey, that's fine. That's all I got to <laughs> say. But those are the only two things I feel confident about for this year. Okay. And then if Pitbull doesn't come out tomorrow, then damn. Then then State is probably going to last longer than six months. <laughs> that's what you... So if he comes out tomorrow, then State is going to end in six months. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you're a, saying. Yeah. It's, it's like it's Groundhog all, Day. It's all dependent <laughs> on each other. That's so random. <laughs> Okay, look, listen, I, I, I will take those bets. I, I will watch. I'll watch from afar. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, and that with that, that's all the news we got for this week. Do you think uh, the Do you think the Niners are gonna take it? Um, if you think about it, this is another Warriors versus versus LeBron situation. Mm-hmm. You have the Chiefs who have Mahomes. Mahomes arguably is going to be the next star Q, uh, QB after Tom Brady retire. Like there's n- like he's basically on track to be the next best QB, but you have the 49ers who are the much more across the board um well completed team. Mm. So it's another one of superstar power versus the team. I and, see. And obviously, we're from the Bay Area, so we're cheering for the Niners. Um, any mm. if anyone's listening from Kansas City, good luck. <laughs> good luck. So, uh, good luck to your team. Hope you guys do well. Hope you hope you do well, but not well enough. <laughs> oh shit! So <laughs> there's the trash talk. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think we have a good chance. Uh, like I'm not gonna lie, mm-hmm. Mahomes is really uh, their their quarterback is really good. But I um, hey, y- you just gotta believe. Yeah, I mean, you just got to believe in your team. So true, that's true. You know, although history has proven that one man cannot always defeat a whole team. Yeah, but we will see. I know Mahomes is better than Garoppolo, but I do believe in the rest of the people. So yeah, believe, believe in your team. You just got to believe in the team and the coach. So yeah, cool, dope. Um, anything else before we close out? I don't think we have any questions. We do have one question. Oh, we have one question? Yes, this is from Rokoto Rangetsu on our Discord. Hey, and, what's up? And he asks, have you seen the movie Parasite? What did you think? Have you seen the movie Parasite? I have. I watched it recently. Oh, have uh, Parasite is I, honestly the best movie of 2019 for me. It was so good. I feel very positively about Parasite. If 
the Oscar. So the Oscars are the U.S. award show for movies. Mm-hmm. If the Oscars cared about Asians, uh, Parasite would. Parasite is better than every single movie that's come out last year in the United States. Because the thing is, is like. Um, and now I'm going to go on a quick Oscar rant, which I feel like I go on at least once a year. Yeah, yeah. about this time. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll, I'll wait. I always go on this rant, but there are foreign movies. That, so there is a foreign movie category for the Oscars, which is U.S. based. And every time a foreign movie has been nominated for Best Picture, more more often than not, it's always a European movie that gets nominated for the mm-hmm, Oscar. Mm-hmm. I think the first time in a very long time that a, a non-European movie was nominated for Best Picture was the Netflix movie Roma. Oh, yeah. Which came out, I want to say, last year. It was last year's uh, movie. 2018, so two years ago. Yeah. yeah. So that was like the first foreign movie that was not European in a while to be nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. And um, honestly, Parasite is... Parasite just has excelled in a lot of categories yep. in terms of cinematography, oh, in yeah. terms of storytelling, storytelling, location, exactly. production design, yeah. uh, acting, like the cast was wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, it's, everything about that movie was just so cool. Yeah. And I just, God, it is just way better than Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. How the fuck are you going to give awards to once upon a time in hollywood after watching parasite i'm just saying yeah i mean i really did enjoy once upon a time in hollywood but i think i feel like parasite is the more complete like, movie yeah it, it just the it, movie came full circle it's a complete package yeah uh bong joon ho the director of the of parasite is just He's a, he's a master storyteller. Like yes. he really gets everything out. He, like he's so detailed. I was watching um uh Vanity Fair does this thing where they break down a scene with the director and yes. the actors. And uh, I don't know if you saw it, but it was the Parasite one with Bong Joon Ho and then Wu Shik, the guy that plays uh the kid, the young the son. son. He, I, the I love him by the way. I've yeah. seen I've seen quite a few things with him. Yeah, before. he's uh he was born in Korea but moved to Canada and then came back to Korea so he's pretty fluent in English. Yes. So he and uh, Bong Joon-ho were talking about scenes in the movie and how the family lives kind of in a semi basement house um and they were like talking about details about how the the son's friend that comes to visit them has a really expensive watch and he dresses really nicely compared to the son's clothing which are a little bit more tighter or looser because yeah. he just doesn't care about fashion and I thought that was like yeah like I t- could totally see that and you don't have to explain it you just show it and I was just like wow this guy Definitely knows what he's talking about. Exactly. And they timed the scene with the bus coming by to, to you know, represent like a change of character for the for the son. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't want to spoil the movie at all because I think everyone should see it. I don't think we'll be doing a spoiler cast on it, but because um, I don't think it deserves a spoiler cast. Not not to say that the movie's like really low um, with uh, what's it called with what it is. It's just like. If we do, if we do a spoiler cast, I feel like it's just kind of redundant with with what everyone's going to talk about in the movie. Um, since you and I already know how it ends and how it starts, Elisa, um, yeah, I mean we can always talk about it privately, but everyone should go see it. I think it's a really, really good movie. Um, and yeah, the only other movie that I lo- that I thought was really good from la- that probably is in my top is 1917. I've heard good things about that movie. Um, I'm a person who. Um, I, I do like war movies once in a while, but for me, war movies, I prefer watching them in theaters and not on just a regular TV just sure. because, because it, you get that full effect yeah. when you're actually watching it on a big screen. And uh, cinematography wise, that was also a really good movie, but that was a, that's honestly the only other movie that I feel like really stuck with me last year. Yeah. So, um, but I'm a huge proponent for watching anything, no matter what. Uh, language it's in yeah. so definitely check out parasite and yeah. i am not going to watch the oscars because i'm going to pretend that parasite won best picture and <laughs> um not read any news about it so yeah they i i read that they got an eight minute standing ovation at the Cannes film festival in france wow and yeah for, I, I watched it i was like holy crap this is crazy like the, all the stars were there 
from the movie. I was so surprised by that. And uh, yeah, they after the movie ended, everyone just stood up and clapped. After he received the award, I mean, um, after Bong Joon-ho received the, the Palme d'Or, which is one of the highest um, awards you can get at the Cannes Film Festival in regards to cinema, uh, he was he, he he took it and and when he went back to his seat, everyone stood up and started clapping for eight minutes. That's awesome. And then the the cast kept clapping and they looked <laughs> at each other and then they just they started like clapping a little bit faster and everyone started joining them. I got I, I gotta watch this. Yeah, and then I remember he made a comment. Um, and he was like, someone was like, "How do you feel about this? How do you, like how do you feel about winning?" And he was like, "Well." everyone's hung my whole cast and crew are hungry because we haven't eaten yet (laughs) and then later on he's like i feel embarrassed for saying that i was like nah dude it's all good that's that's totally awesome (laughs) yeah i gotta watch that yeah check it out it's on youtube like i'm sure i've been watching like all the behind the scenes and like you know interviews with the director and the cast and crew because like the movie is charming it's beautiful it's disastrous it's scary it's it's a lot of things and it's four different movies in one movie it goes one way you think it's gonna go one way it goes a different way and then and then you're it just twists and turns until it comes back full circle and you're like how did we get back here act two had me at the edge of my seat yeah me too realize what the plot twist is oh yeah um, if anyone is a fan of Parasite, I suggest you watch his earlier movie from 2006, The Host. It's one of Korea's only monster movies, um, and it's very, very well done. Yes. Uh, I highly recommend The Host. Uh, it stars the same guy that plays the dad in Parasite. Um, uh, oh, Sung Kang? Yes. I forget. I think that's the name. Yes, Sung that Wook? is. I forget his name, but he's he's a really brilliant actor. I'm a huge fan of him. Um, I love that guy. He's also... Y'all think Joaquin Phoenix is the best actor of last year? Then none of you have ever seen Parasite because <laughs> freaking um that was he was the best the yeah. dad the dad in Parasite was the best fucking thing ever. Yep, I I he was, was so good. I was hooked. I was hooked by that movie. By the way, uh, Ke- uh Song Kang Ho. Song Kang Ho. There yes. we go. He's so good. Like yeah. Like, there's no way that you can't nominate that guy for best actor yeah. and have Joaquin Phoenix there. Like, yeah, he's good. Yeah, so I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. I um, yeah, I mean, the the Academy Awards are muddled with terrible things. It's it's a rigged system, and you know, there shouldn't be a best foreign film fe- like category. There should be, you know, foreign films should be recognized and nominated. That's how I feel for everything. Yes. There was a interesting article that came out. There is a there's a movie that came out in Nigeria and I forgot the name of the movie in Nigeria, mm. but the Nigerian movie is all in English and the reason is because the national language of Nigeria is English. Oh. Uh, it, it it's one of the main it's not it's one of the main languages it's not just the fact that oh we're just going to do our movie in english it's the yeah. fact that in, uh, nigeria is an english is is an english speaking country of I course see. of course they're not just speaking english but like that's one of the main languages I see. and then the oscars said it couldn't qualify for any foreign film categories because their whole thing was in english that's and that doesn't make any sense and you're just kind of thinking but it's not the u.s so shouldn't it yeah. be a foreign film yeah yeah it's, exactly it's, it's but so all weird. these british films can be no- nominated for Ex- whatever the fuck so right it's like that doesn't make any sense yeah anyways yeah i i do this rant every year yep but it's um, not gonna change because the people down the top won't change it it's not gonna change but do support parasite that is a good Film. Yeah, so Roko Rangatsu, that's your very long, convoluted answer. Just like the movie Parasite, it's long and convoluted. Yes. And we, I hope that that sufficed. Yeah. Uh, I hope you've seen it, sir. I hope you watched that movie because it's very, very good. Um, if you have, let us know your thoughts on it because I think that would be awesome. Yes. Um, so if you'd like to send us a question or comment, go to www.downtime.live. Mm-hmm. Send us a uh, question or comment in the contact form. You can also email us directly at downtime. I'm sorry, at contact at downtime.live. Uh, you can find our Discord link in the description of this podcast on wherever it may be. You can also leave us a review on iTunes slash Apple Podcasts and we'll read it on the podcast. Any questions or comments can go into our Discord podcast questions chat um, and we will read all questions, comments on YouTube, Stitcher, Podbean, wherever on the podcast. Yep. Let's go... 49ers. Bang, bang, Niner gang. Bang, bang, Niner game.
uh, for the Super Bowl, if you didn't listen earlier <laughs> or pay attention earlier, mm-hmm. is tomorrow for us. So by the time the next episode comes out, we'll know if we're winners or not. Uh, yeah, we'll know if Pitbull was there or not. We'll know if Pitbull was there or not. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for listening. This has been 27. Peace. See ya.